Now at four, new evacuations ordered and firefighters continue to battle two major and active wildfires. Who's being told to leave their homes and what you need to know if your home could be threatened this wildfire season. Live from Utah's first TV station, News for Utah at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Saray Chen. And I'm Glenn Mills. Glad to have you with us tonight. The Hilltop and Coal Hollow fires are still raging with little containment, burning a combined 19,000 acres and threatening communities in Utah, San Pete, and Carbon counties. News for Utah's Rosie Nguyen talked with people dealing with the threat of wildfire, but first, we're going to check in with News Free Talk's Sarah Martin on Highway 6 with the very latest on these fires. And you can see right behind you, Sarah, they are burning really close there. Absolutely. Firefighters are calling this an aggressive, fast moving fire. Let's just look at it behind me. This is about a half mile stretch of Highway 6. Very active flames that are moving. They're moving to the northeast because of the winds. Officials are begging residents of the area to pay close attention to evacuation orders. Communities south of Highway 6 all the way to Soldier Summit have been asked to leave their homes. Officials have issued a pre-evacuation order for areas above Highway 6 and the Schofield Lake area. That means pack a bag, be ready to go immediately if fire personnel instruct you to do so. The fire is currently at 0% containment lifted and that picked up the fire activity we saw 500 foot flame lengths so it's a very aggressive fire and it's moving east the evacuations are pretty far but that's uh, far from the perimeter of the fire some of them but that is because fire activity in this area is known to be extreme and if it were to pick up it would move fairly quickly The Red Cross has a station at the Indianola LDS Chapel for those evacuees. I'll be back live at 5. Reporting live in Spanish Fork Canyon, I'm Sarah Martin. News for Utah. Thank you, Sarah. After a close call with a fire, what do you do when the threat is over to make sure it never happens again? People in Salt Lake City are facing that particular question after the Enzyme Peak fire came within feet of their home. News for Utah's no, uh, Rosie Nguyen spoke with one of the homeowners who took the proper measures. The fire that burned 100 acres on this hillside near Enzyme Peak came close to Jen Daly Provost's home. She says if it wasn't for the fire preventative measures that she took, the outcome could have been a lot worse for her family. Daily Provost watched the fire in her neighborhood from down in the valley on July 24th. She couldn't get to her house until the fire was out. The fire injured three firefighters, but crews managed to save her home. She says it was all thanks to the proactive steps her family took ahead of time. We re-landscaped everything. We took out all the trees that that grew up against the house because that's a huge fire risk and we actually did build into the landscaping a fire break. She says although taking preventative measures may seem inconvenient or pricey, it's all worth it and more cost effective than dealing with property damage. Now Daily Provost told me about a fire prevention incentive program that helped firefighters save her home. I'll have more details on that coming up at 6. Reporting in Salt Lake City, Rosie Nguyen, News for Utah. Turning to the holy wildfire in California, it continues to grow and threaten homes. Someone is now in police custody accused of starting the blaze. More than 13,000 firefighters are on the front lines of this historic wildfire season. That has claimed the lives of eight people statewide. In Southern California, the holy fire doubled in size overnight. About 20,000 people are already under mandatory evacuation orders. Officials have arrested Forrest Gordon Clark and charged him with starting the holy fire on purpose. In an interview before his arrest, Clark denied it. Now to an update on breaking news we brought you this morning. One person is dead after a house caught fire and shots were fired. This happened at 4112 West and 2900 South in West Valley City. When police arrived, they found a victim who died of a gunshot wound. News Futa's Marcos Ortiz is there. Marcos, we are learning more about the victim tonight. 
We certainly are. We're now learning that the person killed was actually a code enforcement officer with West Valley City. According to police, she was at that home just doing her job. That's when witnesses say that the code enforcement officer was shot by a man as the house was burning down. Authorities won't disclose their identities, but the man was taken into custody. Now, this is what neighbors saw shortly after 10 this morning. Most thought it was a house on fire, but then they heard gunfire off in the distance. After the fire was out, the story unfolded, and it was much more serious than a house fire. One person was up close recording the house fire on a cell phone when he watched the shooting unfold on his screen. He saw a woman shot to death by a man who walked up to her. And walked over, saw a man in a walker walk out with a blue shirt on. And he walked out around, <sighs> excuse me, I'm sorry, shot that lady in the face and then turned around, sat there for a second and then walked out. He said it was just horrifying to watch and to think what had he just seen on his screen. Now, just a short while ago, West Valley police say that the home that was set on fire did not belong to the did not belong to the suspect taken into custody. The suspect actually lived next door. Coming up in the next hour, more on the investigation in West Valley. Marcus Ortiz, News for Utah. When I ended up in the emergency room. I lied about what happened. If you've been impacted by domestic violence, you're not alone. Salt Lake City Mayor Jackie Biskupski opened up about being a survivor of domestic violence and the moment an intimate partner strangled her. News for Utah's Andrew Research spoke with her, prosecutors and police who say they are cracking down on those types of crimes. I was a victim almost 30 years ago now. With tears in her eyes, Salt Lake City Mayor Jackie Biskupski hesitated before she chose to open up about the time an intimate partner strangled her. We have to make sure that women who experience this have the confidence when they're in that situation that the right people are in the room helping. Last year, three dozen Utah women were killed by an intimate partner. Non-lethal strangulation, says Salt Lake City Police Chief Mike Brown, can actually increase a woman's chance of being murdered by her partner sevenfold. This is somebody that you've married, that you live with, an intimate partner, and now you're going to choke the life out of them? So we're learning the right questions to ask. First responders today being trained, listening to disturbing examples of when agencies drop the ball when handling strangulation cases. The YWCA sponsoring what they're calling a strangulation summit. We know that about 50% of the people who come to us at the Family Justice Center report that they have experienced strangulation. So first responders are learning to recognize the signs. Redness on the neck. Um, a hoarse voice, things like that. So abusers, says District Attorney Sim Gill, can be brought to justice. When you choke somebody, I use the term Russian roulette. It literally is you're pay playing with the life of somebody else. When I ended up in the emergency room, I lied about what happened. Mayor Biskupski says she hopes victims will be empowered, knowing people on the other end of that emergency call know what they're doing. We are here to serve and to help. Mayor Biskupski says her experience was different 30 years ago because abuse victims weren't believed, sometimes even blamed. She says times have changed, and if you or someone you love is in crisis, call the number 800-799-SAFE, or you can go to goodforutah.com. We've listed many resources available right there. A very candid mayor right there. Yeah, I've never heard her talk about that before, and even though it was so long ago, you could tip still tell she's really struggling with yeah it. the impact it solves throughout your life yeah. you know mm -hmm. well still ahead on news 4 utah at four a story that we first covered here at news 4 utah has now become the basis for a major motion picture we go to la for the premiere of the black klansman Plus, back to school is here, like it or not, which also means school immunizations. We explain what you need to know about your kids' vaccines. And a story you'll see only on News for Utah. Time is running out to help a 12-year-old comic book writer from our state publish the second issue of her Comic with a Cause.